Hey everyone, welcome to Aussie Homeschool Adventures. My name is Jo, it's great to have you here. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, it's great to have you back. Sorry, I've been absent for a little bit this last month. It's just been a bit crazy here at home. We've just had some sickness and we've had things going on. It's just been a bit rough. So, but I'm back. And today I thought I'd share with you my five tips on schooling through sickness. So my daughter's had just a cold, nothing major. She's not been really ill. She hasn't been stuck in bed. She hasn't been, you know, desperately ill. Just a little bit miserable and a little bit unwell. So I don't know there's other people out there, that their kids are like that. And you kind of go, well, do we do school? Do we not do school? Do I give them time off? We've had a little bit of time, like we've had a few days off here and there, but reality is it's been lingering for over a week now, getting close to two weeks of her being just that little bit off color for some of it, some of it worse than others. And it's like, well, we can't take three weeks off school. We can't stop school for three weeks and keep her in bed unless she was really, really sick. You know, that's different. I I'm talking about, you know, this is the child that's happy to go outside. She's outside at the moment on the trampoline. So, you know, there's energy for the trampoline. I'm, I'm sure we can find some energy for some schoolwork, much to her dismay. So I just thought I'd share with you the five things that I've done that have actually allowed me to keep schooling going with my daughter. I made notes. So, number one, let go of the hard things. Things that you find hard or your child finds hard as a subject subject that they don't really, really enjoy or that is a really hard thing. So don't worry about them. Let those things go for, for that season. You know, you don't have to do everything all the time. And if something is particularly hard or they're finding it frustrating, then stop that and move on. Tip number two is to stick to your core subjects. So for me, I've just been focusing on her language arts lessons, her maths lessons, and any of our read aloud subjects that I'm reading and they're just either listening or doing some basic activities to afterwards. So I've done our history because that's really easy. We're just reading it and then we're talking about it and there might be some colouring in or a little bit of map work or something out of our story of the world or our Australian history that we've been reading and then just talking about it or we've watched an episode of My Place on the TV and talked about that. So things like that that don't require huge amounts of writing or are hugely complex. Um, tip number three, take lots of breaks. So when they're tired, just stop, take a five minute break. Let them have a drink of water, let them go and do something else for a few minutes if you need to. We just, we pause when we need to, let her have a break, let her have a little rest. But usually we can get through our core subjects in two hours. And I pick the time of day that is her brightest when she's at her her best and we plow through school then and then we're usually pretty good. Um, number two, um, number four, pick your battles. So if they're really pushing back against you on something, really fighting or whatever, my, my line is always, I just choose my battles. There are some things that are worth fighting for, like her maths lesson or her, her writing lesson. And even then I will negotiate. So like today we wrote three sentences and the last sentence she was like, I'm tired, my hands are sore. So we came up with a sentence together. I wrote it and then she traced it. So she still got to do the writing. We still worked on the sentence. We completed the activity but it was easier for her and that one worked for us. And then my last tip is to lower your expectations. So just remember that they're not well, so they're not gonna be working at their peak. They're not gonna be turning out the most amazing sentences or the most neatest handwriting or the most amazing work. You just need to lower your expectations and done is better than perfect for me anyway, and it might be different for you. And look, that's fine. Take what you will out of this. I'm no expert. I'm just another mum sharing what I've found that's been really helpful for me and my family in our current little season of cold and flu season. So, you know, just, yeah, relax, 
try and get things done. And my bonus tip for you, I said it was five. I've got one more bonus tip. And that is to try some game schooling. My girls love to play board games and we love to do school through games. So sometimes when we're sick, I'll pull out a couple of our board games and we'll play a couple of games like that and we'll, we'll learn that way for a day or so. And that's a really fun way of doing it. They're still learning, but they're having fun and they don't feel like they're doing school and they're a great victory all around. So I hope you find these tips helpful. Um, I've kept this video really short just because I can, but if you've enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up. Share this video with your homeschooling friends, people that might find this helpful or interesting. Stick around for more great homeschooling content and I will see you in the next one. Bye.